So I put in the, the, the logistics sign, the logistics of the, the final exam, so as you know. So, so we'll take the final exam on the So I just cut the thing, okay? Oh, this is final exam, right? Okay. So I did not change the one, it's a December 21, 21st, okay? And then, uh, so, uh, so I believe uh, we, we need the uh, one and a half hour for the final exam. What's this? So, so my plan. So, so, so we we'll start the final exam on uh, one twenty, like the one ten minutes earlier than the, the regular class time. I think it's okay, right? No, is it over available? Okay, good. So if you are not if you are not available, please let me know immediately. So email me uh, about the, your schedule, the final exam schedule. Uh, okay, uh, and then we will take the final exam in this place. And then, so the coverage, is, the coverage of the final exam, the final exam will include the chapter four, five, and six. I don't know we can uh, cover the chapter six, but if we can cover chapter six, then the final actually the chapter six is very simple. So final exam also will cover the chapter six, and then oh, not this one. Three, four, five, six, five. I just copied the this one. <laughs> this line. Okay, so, so this is the closed book exam. And then uh, you can use the only the simple calculators, okay? But you cannot use any other electric devices during the exam. So you can answer in Korean or English, okay? Any question? No. So, uh, so in the previous class, we I briefly I briefly uh introduce of introduce to the I I briefly introduce about the virtual memory. Okay. So, and then also I mentioned that the virtual means the so fake. Okay. And then actually so. So firstly, you may think that it's, it is not, it is it is difficult to understand, but so actually the virtual memory is designed for convenient, the convenient software design, okay? So, so in the previous class, I mentioned that the, if the virtual memory is not supported, the software developers or software programmers need to manage the memory in the, in the software itself, okay? So software designer needs to consider memory management on the, on the system, but it's not, it's not possible actually. So, so it is because the computer systems include the different size of physical memory, so physical, different size of the DRAM, means the main memory. Also, you don't know the real situation. So which means that actually on the computer systems, we run many programs concurrently, so it's important. We can run, we can launch many applications, or actually it's thread, it's called thread, okay? So we can run multiple thread concurrently on the computer system, but it's also fake, right? So actually, the physical core, like the, the you know the, the modern computer processors include the multiple core, or multiple physical core. So actually, we can run only one thread. So usually, only one thread per core. If the core support multi-threading, so we can run multiple thread. But usually, usually one physical core can run one thread only, okay? So actually the many threads 
Many threads are launched by operating system, and then the information and data required by these many threads exist in the exist in the main memory, and then operating system select the which thread will be actually run on the control system. Okay, that that is the this is the role of a, of operating system. So, uh, so I mentioned that many threads, many threads share the same physical memory. So which means that the operating system also needs to manage the the memory space allocated to the each thread. Okay. And then the virtual actually the main role, the main role of the virtual memory is the, the memory management, the memory man management for multiple threads. Okay. But I also mentioned that so actually this is the this is the some actually original purpose of virtual memory. So what is this? So use main memory as a cache. Okay, so what is the role of cache memories? So the purpose of cache is to store frequently used data in the smaller storage space, right? Then why why we why we need to use main memory like a cache? So this, it, it, is, it is because in the old control systems, the main, the main memory size is too small. Actually, the main memory size was too small. So, it is big, so you know, the DRAM is more expensive than hard disk drives, right? So, and also, uh, actually, the semiconductor technology uh, was not good in the, in the, in the old computers, in the old computer generations. So actually the memory size is too small. So then how can we solve this issue? We want to use some good memories, but the, this memory is expensive and the memory size is small. Then we can use this memory like a cache, right? So this is the, the main uh, component of it memory hierarchy. So actually the virtual memory concept is developed for using the main memory like a cache. So the frequently used data, the frequently used data is stored in the main memory and then some other data is stored in the slow hard disk drive, the storage, okay? So, so for this of course, but in order to uh, provide the, the large size of the memory, so we need to provide the, some large memory space, okay? So for example, so this memory size is the 640 kilobyte, it's too small, but we want to provide the large memory such as the two megabyte, right? So you, you can think that, oh, it's too small, but actually in the old control system, the old control system includes the uh, 640 kilobyte of main memory, okay? So it's too small, but we want to provide the, this large space. So if we provide this large space to the software or thread, then some data, some data can be found in the real physical memory, but other data, so this other data can be found in the Score is it like how do this drive? So actually, it means so software, software think that oh we can access that this large memory, the so large virtual memory, so it's a fake memory, but actually some part of a virtual memory is mapped to the real physical memory, and then some part of the virtual memory space is mapped to the storage. Okay, so I mentioned map. Okay, map. So what is map? Mapping. So map means that A is so indexed, so pointed to the other place B. 
Okay. So in order to use main memory like a cache, we need to map the address of this fake memory, so virtual memory, to the physical memory or stories. So this mapping information is required. Okay. So you need to remember that in order to support the virtual memory, so we need to organize the data structure that stores the mapping information. Okay. So this is the original for the virtual memory. So we, we want to use the large memory, but this is this is not possible and this is also very expensive. But we provide the very large fake memory, so very large virtual memory to the software, but actually the data can be stored in the main memory, like DRM, or storage. This is the main purpose of virtual memory. But recently, the main memory size is very large. So you can think that, oh, we don't need to support virtual memory anymore. But as I mentioned, the, our computer system run multiple threads concurrently. And then this is just a fake. But I also mentioned that this is fake. It, this is support. Uh, this, this function is supported by operating system. But it's a true point. So many threads need to share the uh, same physical memory. Okay? And then, as I mentioned, some. So actually, if we compile the uh, the high level language code, so you know, uh, some instruction is compiled to like the load instruction. Then, actually, this load, the load instruction from different application may use the same address. But we already know that if the applications are different, then the data, data required by different applications are also different, right? So we need to distinguish. So even though the, this address is the same, the address defined by instruction or code is the same, but actually the data is different, okay? Because applications are different. So actually, in order to also, in order to support the multiple uh, thread or multiple application, we need to allocate the, some part of a physical memory to the some other application A, also some part of a main memory to the different application, like to application B. So this mapping information. So this A can be mapped to the some different location in the physical memory like this here. Also, it's the same address, but this same address can be mapped to the some different location of the physical memory. So I mentioned that oh, this is the same address A, but this address is mapped to the different location. So which means we need mapping information from this address to real physical address. Okay? Do you understand? So this address is called the virtual address, the virtual address, and then this virtual address needs to be translated into the real physical address. Okay, so it means we also need address translation from virtual address to physical address. And then to the software, to the software, we also, the operating uh, system provides the fake memory space, right? like the virtual memory. Okay, so this fake memory space is provided to the software or thread, but this fake space can be mapped to the different space, <coughs> different spaces in the physical memory. So actually, so that's why the virtual memory, memory is required. Actually, this is the main purpose of virtual memory on the modern computer system, okay? 
So, so present event this is more important. Okay. So anyway, the operating system are performed the virtual memory space. And then which means that we need to translate. We need to translate the virtual address to the real physical address. Okay. So this is required. Then how? So actually the simplest way is to we can map every byte address into the every byte physical address. So for example, if this is the load word A, and then that also that it is the load byte A. So this is the byte address. So actually at every address is the byte address, but so we uh, this load instruction requires the data from address A, but I mentioned that this address is the virtual address. Okay, it's not a physical address. This is the um, this is a virtual address, and then this address needs to be translated translated into the physical address. This is the real address of the physical memory. And then real data, real data is stored in the, this address of the, <coughs> the, the memory space map indexed by this physical address. Okay? So, so this is the byte address and this is the byte address. So you can think that, oh, we can uh, translate the every byte address into the every physical byte address, but it's inefficient, right? So actually, in order to support the byte level address translation, so we require a large-sized mapping information table, right? Also, some data like the load word. A, uh, some instructions. Some instructions also require some multiple byte. So data of multiple byte. Also, usually in the same software, in the same software or same thread, because of spatial locality, right? Because of spatial locality, the data, the data required by this software is located in the, I mean, a certain part of address. So it's a near address. So actually it means that the address range zero required by the software is the, uh, it's concentrated on the, some small part of memory space, okay? On both <laughs> Converse, converse, that's not part of the uh, memory space. So, it's not efficient to translate the every byte, every byte of virtual address into the every byte of physical address. So, actually, so this address translation is performed at a granularity of some block. And then usually we use the four kilobyte block. Okay, so which means we do not translate the, the lower part of address of the virtual address. And then this this low part is it just this low part is it the same value in the physical address. So we just translate the, some block, the, this block-based address into the physical address, okay? So this block, this block <coughs> is called the page, okay? So like the page of a book, the, actually the page includes the many, Characters or many words, 
So actually, the wizard friend ransom is black grand, black size, the black granular, granular, granular block, so basic granular block into the, the block of the physical address. So, as I mentioned, the virtual address is translated into the physical address, but this lower part is not translated. The lower part is just copied to the, the lower part of the physical address. But in the, as I mentioned, the size of, so usually, usually the size of a single page is four kilobytes, okay? And then, so it means that four kilobytes of a block, a single block, occupies the address number 11 down to zero, so 12 bit, right? Because two to the power of 12 is four kilo, right, four, four kilo, okay? So this part is not translated, only the upper part. Upper part of the virtual address is translated into the physical address. So this upper part of the virtual address is called the Virtual page number or in the in the abbreviation form, this is the BPM, virtual page number. And then also this virtual page number part of the address is translated, translated into the uh, this upper part of the physical address. So this upper part of the physical address is called the physical page number, so this is the PPM, okay? So, in order to support the virtual memory, I mean the VPN, the VPN part of the virtual address is translated in the physical page number part of the physical address, but in the, the lower part of the address, this is, the, this is called the page offset, so page offset is just copy to the page offset part of the physical address, okay? Because this block size is the four kilobyte. Also, as you can see, you can find that the virtual address includes the, the virtual address uh, includes the 48 bit in this example, okay? Then, then what is the size of the virtual memory? What is the maximum size of a virtual memory? It's a 48 bit. So the size is the two to the power of 48 byte because the address is the byte address. And then you know two to 40 is the para. Okay. And then two to, two to the power of eight is the 256, right? 256 terabyte. So using this virtual memory space, and it actually it's a, it's a maximum size, but so some people think that, oh, I have the very large memory of 256 kilobytes. It's very large, right? But what's the actual size of the physical memory? The actual size of the physical memory is determined by physical address, right? So what is the uh, pin numbers of a physical address, it's 40 bit, right? So it's one terabyte, right? Zero, mega, giga, terabyte, right? So actually the size of a physical memory is smaller than the size of the virtual memory. But don't you think that, oh, I have a large memory space, even though it's fake, okay? And then we can just write the code. Just, uh, <coughs> just, just we can just we can just write write the code which is like uh, based on the for this virtual memory size, okay, the large virtual memory space, okay. So this is very convenient. Okay, this is the example. So this, in this example, you can you can find the virtual address space. And then in this example, the virtual page number size is the 19 bit. Okay. So this is this is the 
sine the root BPM first. And then also we need to add the 12 bit. So this 12 bit is the size of age of seven, right? So what is the total, total bit number of the virtual address? The total bit number of this virtual address is the is 31. Okay, here, let us know. And then in this example, the PPN, the, the bit number of PPN is the 15 bit. Also, <clears throat> We need to add the page offset part, so the bit number assigned to the physical address is the 27 bit, okay? But as I mentioned, only the virtual page number is translated into the physical page number, okay? So this is the some virtual memory space, so as you can see, you can find the, the address range of the one page, Okay, and this is the virtual page number BPN. So virtual page number zero, so include the address zero to FFM, okay? Because this is the 12 bit. So this is the, the address range of the one page. And then as you can see, this the, the virtual page, the virtual page space is mapped to the some different physical page space. So this is the real memory space in the real main memory, like DRAM. Okay, DRAM is the main memory. Okay. So this is the example. Then how can we translate the the virtual address of zero two four seven D? Then we need to get the physical address from the this virtual address 247C. So it's like the, the load word A, then but this A is the 0x247C. So <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and then the page size, the page size is the 4 kilobyte. So the lower 12 bit is used as the page offset. So in this address, what is the lower 12 bit? This part, 47C is the lower 12 bit of the virtual address. So this is the page offset, okay? This is the page offset, the offset. Then what is the VPN, the virtual page number? VPN is, so this is two, and then in the, in the this virtual memory, uh, the translation table, the VPN is here, right? And then in this translation, so in this uh, page mapping, the so this zero 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 two is mapped to the physical page number of seven F F M, right? So in this example. So what is the so VPN zero two ah uh, VPN of two zero x two is translated into zero x seven f f f so this is the physical page number so what is the physical address of this virtual address so zero x seven f f f this is the physical page number and then we can concatenate the 47C, so this is the page offset. So this is the physical address of this virtual address. Okay, so which means if the, this load, load work is executed by a CPU, and then actually the CPU access the data in this physical address, okay? So, so until uh, people we learn about the virtual address, we just assume that so when the load word is, is executed, then this load word just directly access the, the memory space, but so actually, actually the address, the address used by 
So load word is the virtual address. Okay. And then actually this virtual address needs to be translated into the physical address. Like this this process. Do you understand? Okay. Then uh <clears throat> there is yeah. but so I mentioned that the VPN sign, the the bit numbers of uh, used by the VPN is larger than the, the bit numbers used by physical page number, which means that actually the, usually the virtual memory space is larger than the physical memory space. Okay. So what does that mean? So as I mentioned, so this is the, the original purpose of the virtual memory. So which means a certain data. So we, oh, so CPU executes the load word A, but this is the virtual address. And then which means that this, uh, this virtual address needs to be translated to the physical address. But you know, the virtual memory space is larger than the, the physical memory space. So which means the weakest data may not exist in the physical memory. That can be possible, right? Because the virtual memory space is larger than the physical memory space. So in this case, the weakest data can be found in the Storage, storage devices like the hard disk drives, and then you said the most recently we use SSD. So, so the weakest data can be found in the physical memory or storage devices. Okay, then if the Weakest data is not found in the physical memory, then it is called the page fault. The page fault. So, if the weakest data is found in the physical memory, then we can get the physical address of the main memory. But a certain data, so a certain data may not found in, may not be found in the physical memory. So this event is called the page fault. Okay, so this is very similar to the cache method. Cache method, the cache hierarchy. So what is required for the cache method? If the request is missed in the cache, so what is required? The request is given to the low level cache or main memory, right? The request is given. And then the required block, the block, okay? The, this data size is the same to the, the size of the cache block. The requested block is provided to the cache. And then this block is allocated in the cache. And then this data is provide from the this cache block. So this is the, the required process for cache missing. So page fault is the same. So page fault is the miss in the main memory, right? So if the page fault is encountered in the, in the virtual address translation, then so it is miss. So the request is given to the storage. Okay. Then the entire page, and then I mentioned that the page size is usually four kilobyte, right? So this amount of data is fetched from the storage device, and then this four kilobyte of page is allocated to the main memory. Okay, then so we can find the request data, the main memory. So then it, uh, we can read the data from the main memory. So page fault is very similar to the 
test the case and not test current. But for the page port, then we need to access the storage devices. And then, you know, the storage devices are extremely slow, right? So actually, this page port, when the page port is encountered in the virtual in the virtual memory, then it may take it may take millions of cycles. So if we use the hard disk drive, it's extremely slow. So even though we use the SSD, but you know, the SSD is also very, very slow. Okay. So this is the slow event. So actually, the page for page fault is handled by operating system. And then page fault is the kind of exception. Okay. So you can understand that okay, the page fault is very similar to the this is in the cache hierarchy. But because, because the storage devices are extremely slow, so this page fault is handled by operating systems like exceptions. Okay? So the page fault is detected by a uh, processor, then the exception, like the exception, other exceptions. The exception is handler, handler is call. Okay, it jumps to the, the exception handlers. Okay, so so it is usually usually the handled by operating system. Okay, but we also need to uh, minimize the pain or the way. Okay, so the, this is required, but this is the kind of the operating system issue. Okay. So, and then in order to support the, the this the virtual memory, then the pro, the computer computer needs to know computer needs to include the address translation information, right? So in this example, so the virtual or BPM, the virtual page number two is mapped to the physical page number 7 F L M. So in order to translate, in order to translate the this mapping, the virtual address to the physical address, actually this mapping information needs to be stored in the computer systems. Okay. So this information is called the page table. Okay, but so you can just think that the page table is some kind of the data structure. So, for example, so the so like the A zero, A one, A two. So this is the these are the elements of array, right? And then so we can access the the required data, the demanded, demanded data using stored in the array using the index. Index of the array, right? Page table is the same. So actually the page table is generated and managed by operating system. And then operating system is the software, right? And then it means that the operating system generates the data structure called the page table. And then using the, this uh, data structure and the page table, we can get the, the translation information for the virtual page number. So for example, so in our access to this data, so we can use the the index of array, this is the zero, but in, in the, this page table, you can use the BPM, the virtual page number, as the index of page table. 
by n. If we access the this element a zero using the this pkn, the pkn is zero, then we can get the physical page number map to the this BPM, right? So actually the page table is the array, the array, array data managed by operating system. Okay. And then we can use the BPM as the index of this page table. Okay, then we can each element of the this array includes the the physical page number mapped to the BPM. So if we just access the, the element of array using the BPM, then we can get the PPM. Okay. Also, the physical page includes the, the other the important information. So it means that the physical, pay, physical pay, pay table also include the blanks, okay? like cache. Okay. So this is the example. So, so this is the virtual address, the virtual address, and then when the load word is executed, then we can, this is the virtual address, right? And then this is the physical address. And then we can find the physical page number here, right? So this is the physical page number. And then you can find the many elements stored in the, this page table, okay? So what element of a page table is called the page table entry? The, in the abbreviation form, this is the PTE, page table entry, okay? So as I mentioned, so this is the page offset. The page offset is the copy to the the page offset part of the physical address. This virtual page number needs to be translated. So in order to access the physical page number, then we need to know the, the address. So address of the this page table. So as I mentioned, as I mentioned, the page table is the data structure. And then in order to access the the first element of the, the array, the, the array, then we need to know the, the address of the, the first element of this array, right? So this information is stored in the page table register. Okay, so when the load word is executed using the address. A, so this is the address A, and then this is the virtual address. And then we need to access the, the corresponding page table entry. How? The page table register stores the, the address of the first element. So it means that this is, so this is the, let us open that, so this is the PT, okay? The so array name is the PT, then the page table register includes the, the first address. This is the physical address. So the base address of the PT, right? So then we can get the target address of the target, the address of the target PTE using the the base address, the base address is the PT0, the address of the PT0 plus offset. Okay, like the BPN. Okay. But the, we need to multi multiply the, the size of PTE, right? Because the PT usually the PT the, uh, the size of a single entry of a page table is a four by. Okay, so we need to multiply the size of the PTE because this is the type of this. Okay. So using the this address, we access the, the 
pay the payable, then we get the dot TPM, right? TPM. Then by concatenating TPM and AJ offset, we can get the physical address. And then we can access physical memory using this physical address. Okay. This is how the virtual memory of virtual address is translated into the physical address. Then that's the problem. Okay, I mean, okay so this is the example. Okay, let's, let's see the example. So this is the page table, right? And then this is the virtual page number. And then so this and then every entry so represent the represent page table entry. So this is the P P zero. So we, we can use the virtual page number as the index of the page table, right? So what is the physical address of a virtual address zero x zero f two zero? So in the same way, so the this part, this part is the page offset. Okay. So this is the 12 bit. So we need to translate the virtual page number. VPN is the five. So VPN is the five. And then where is the five? Five is here, right? And then if we access the page table entry indexed by the virtual page number, the five. So this is the plan. So this is, which means that this page table entry includes the valid translation information. Okay, so it's, it's a valid. So this is, if this is zero, then this is the page port, okay? But, so this is the PT5, okay? And then the target page table entry includes very translation information. So what is the PPN? PPN is 0x0001. So we can get PPN from the page table. Then, oh. This is one, the PPN is one, and then page offset is just copy. So this is the physical address. So we can use page table like this. So we need to use the page table for translating virtual address into physical address. This is the, another example for this representation. PG4. Okay, so as I mentioned, so this is the virtual address of the page BPM is the seven, and then let we can access the uh, page table using the this BPM, but this is invalid. Okay, so in this, this is the page point. Okay, it's a page point. So we cannot find any data in the physical memory. So in this case, as I mentioned. So this is the exception. So <clears throat> and then this page four exception is handled by operating system. So operating system reads the four kilobyte of block from the storage and then to this allocate the this fixed uh, four kilobyte block in the physical memory and then change the this value as the one and then reread the physical page. And then you can get the PPM of the this target of uh, this PPM. Okay. So as I mentioned, the mapping can be mapped the <coughs> PPM can be mapped to the physical memory and then is the storage. Okay. So so you can think that uh so then uh so actually this is also handled by operating system. So so actually uh 
because we just use the main memory like cache. The problem is that you know the main memory is very large. So actually it's not easy to manage this large memory space. Okay. So but we need to reduce the PDG port weight. So if the PDG port is frequently uh, occurs, then the exception is this means that the page port exceptions are frequently uh, inactive, and the operating system is to call the this exception handlers, and then the we need to access them. So this storage is very frequently. So you know the disks are very very slow. The storage devices are very very slow. So in this case, then the uh, <coughs> so the computer performance can be down. Downgrade. Okay, so we need to avoid uh, this situation. Okay, so we prefer also LRU replace not the uh, in the virtual memory. Okay, but you know the memory size is very large, so it's not easy to apply the exact LRU replace on the policy. So this is the uh, uh, um, alternative policy. So. Periodically, the the table entry is the so actually the there is the, some huge bit in the page table entry. So which means that it means the huge bit represents. So this page table is recently accessible. Okay, then this huge bit is pretty periodically cleared, so it becomes zero. Okay, then. If the reference bit is zero, then it means that this is not uh, recently accessed. So if the operating system first replaced up this page table entry. Okay. Also, the right is the right back. Okay. Because the disk is extremely slow. Okay. So this is this policy is a, is the some operating system policy. So you can you can run about the the, the virtual memory management in the operating system course. Okay. And then what's the problem? So we 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 learn so so actually yes, so we learn so virtual memory so it's easy so actually if we use the uh, virtual memory concept then we can easily write or program code. So we don't need to consider about the memory management to be right uh, program code. Okay. So it's very convenient for software development, uh, software development, okay, software engineering. And what's the problem? It's good for the software developer, but it's not good for the performance of control systems. Why? Right? In order to access a certain data is using the load word A, but in order to access the, some data, then this virtual address needs to be translated into the physical address. So it means that whenever we uh, whenever a CPU executes load or store instructions, actually, this address needs to be translated into the physical address because the physical address is the real address. Okay? So what's the problem? I mentioned that the page table is the Data structure, so software data structure, like the software array. Okay, so array data actually. This is the array data. And then this data it also exists in the main memory space. But the, what is the problem? In order to get physical page number map to the virtual page number as i mentioned we need to access main memory using the 
this or the rest. Okay, the base of the rest of group is table plus BPN number multiplied by size of group B table N2. Okay, so which means that in order to execute the load instruction, we require another load instruction, another load. Okay, but this is the this is done by hardware automatically. But the latency, we learned that if we read data from the main memory, then it will take a very long time. So, which means that we, so actually, when the load instruction is executed, it may take a very long time. What's the problem? Actually, in order to access the page table, the page table is needed to the memory. It can be cached, but usually the page table increases to the memory. Okay? So which means that we need to read data from the memory. It's ridiculous, right? In order to get the physical page number, then we need to access main memory. Okay? So it will take a long time. This is the problem. So how can we solve this problem? Uh, how can we solve the Long memory latency. We use cache, right? So if it can take a long cycle, long cycle to a long time for accessing page table, then in order to reduce uh, this time, so access time about page table, then we can cache. We can cache this page table entry in the CPU. Do you understand? So, so what which data is required for the translation? So actually we require BPN to PPN translation. So which means that we require this data. PPN maps to the BPN. Okay. Also, this block size is the four kilobyte. Okay. So, which means that, and then because the rotation of quality, if a certain data is demanded by a certain application, then the near data, the, the data of near address will be demanded in the near future because this is the spatial locality. So which means this is the four kilobyte of block. And then, which means that if a, a, a uh, like another something, if the data B is accessed in this, in this page, the, the, this, this page block, then if we access Demand C or D or E, this is the, uh, the variable in the, in the application. Then, with high probability, this, these variables can be also found in the same page. Do you understand? Okay. Because of spatial locality. Okay. So, when the, when the compiler generates the uh, data uh, compiled to some address space, the compiler allocates the, the data used by a certain application in the, some small part of the small space in the, the memory space. This is the spatial locality. So, actually, if, also, if this physical page number is used by a certain load instruction, the final load instruction can use the same physical page number, right? Because of 
special local so it means if we firstly use this physical page number by this load inspection then we will uh, actually cpu so cpu will use the same physical page number repeated in the near future okay so now to uh, exploit the, these characteristics or this property, we can use cache-like mechanism. Okay, why do we use cache? In order to exploit the data locality, okay, like the spatial locality or uh, temporal locality. It's the same. Once the physical page number is used, a program or thread will frequently use this the same physical page number again and again. Okay, we can observe very strong locality in the its translation for your page number to physical page number. So in this case we can use cache-like mechanism. Okay. And it is very simple, right? So we just use the so use the page table entry in the, you can store the use the page table entry in the CPU, okay? And then, so this is the cache, cache of the page page. Oops. Okay, and then this cache of the page table is called the Translation look aside performance. In the abbreviation form, this is the PLP. So it's a translation look aside performance. Okay. So TLB, so TLB just caches page paper entry. Okay. If the uh, assertion page table is used once, then this page table entry is stored in the PLB. So PLB is the cache of the page table. Okay. So like the cache, the PLB is stored the uh, part of the page table entry. Right. So it's okay. So we can frequently we can uh, frequently find the um, this. We can see the page, page table entry in the PLP. Okay. Okay, so so if we use the uh, TLB, then the, the page table and so we can get the, the target page table entry uh, quickly at the so if we can find the, the target page table entry in the TLB, okay? So TLB works like this. So in the cache, so we, we need to identify the target data or target address of the demanded data. So we use the PLB. In the, in the TLB, which information is required? For this identification. So I mentioned that TLB just to stores the page table entry, right? Target page table entry. And then we can get the target page table entry using the BPN. Okay. So BPN is the index of page table. So it's very similar to the address of data. So we can use the BPN as the tag of the TLB, right? Obviously, right? So BPN is stored here, okay? BPN, we can use the BPN as the tag of the TLB. Then what is the data? Data is the PPN and then some other flavors. So it means the, the, the data is the 
pages in your entry. Okay. So, which means, so the so load was A. So, this is the virtual address. And then we can get the VPN from the this virtual address. Then, using the, this VPN, we firstly access TLB. Is it because TLB is the cache of the page table? We access the TLB using the this VPN. Okay, so we use the VPN for accessing TLB. So in the TLB, the same VPN is found. It is the it means that the tag, the tag is matched. Okay, so which means the target VPN is found in the TLB. So in this case, we can get the this VPN very quickly. Okay. And then using the, this VPN, we can access memory system. Okay. If but this is the cache. So the target page table entry cannot be found in the may not be found in the TLB. So this is the TLB means then we need to access the page table. Okay. So we can we can use we can use the TLB as the cache of the page table, and then using the TLB, we can quickly get the, the target physical page number, okay, or target PP PP page table and okay. okay, so. So, because of the TLB, so there, there, there is another event, another different event. So, if the TLB can be hit or missed. And what, as I mentioned, if the TLB is missed, then we can access the, the page table to the memory. Okay? And then, if the page is not in the memory, if the page is full, so this is the exception. This is the exception. Okay, and then. This is what I already explained. So, so actually, the uh, but uh, we can for this. So actually, so we need to so so this this figure shows the, the interaction between TLB and cache. So what does that mean? So this is the load word. Okay. So actually, I mentioned that this is the virtual address. So, and then in order to get the real address on the this data, so we need to get the physical address. Okay. So, so which means that actually, so we need to access the cache using the this physical address. It's because this is the real address on the of this data. Okay. So this video shows the, some required process for accessing cache with TLB. Okay. So this is the <laughs> load of A. So and then so this is the virtual address. And then by accessing the TLB, we can get the physical page number. So this is the physical address, right? And then using the, this physical address, we can uh Identify the block offset by the offset and then cache index, so in set index and then tag. Okay, using the this physical address, then we can access tag. Uh, then we can access cache. Okay, so you need to uh, just uh, you need to remember that when the cache is accessed, accessed then we actually we need to get the physical address. Okay, and then some part like the page offset. Can be included in the, the cache index, or uh, so actually. But the, if the page size is large, then the page offset cannot include the this index part of the cache. So actually, mm, so this is the somewhat of the advanced issue. So. Uh, 
Uh, so actually, this figure uh, explains that in order to get the exact touch in that, that we need to we need to uh, get the exact physical address from the TLB. But what, what is the problem? So which means that L1 cache. So actually, in order to access the L1 cache, then we need to use the physical address, right? This is because this is the real address. So what's the problem? The problem is that in order to access the L1 cache, we first access the TLB. Then why is it? What is important for the, this error cache? <coughs> Actually, we learned that peak time is critical for the error cache. All right. For the heat case, then the clock is not wasted in the error cache. So that's the problem. People accessing error cache, then we need to access here. So it takes time. Okay. The problem is that if the PLB is required before accessing L1, then the hit time is increased. So the overall performance can be degraded also. So some processors use virtual address to access error cache. Even though this is not uh, exactly correct, but it's possible. Okay, but when the L2 is accessed, then we can just hide the latency of PLB in the error L2 late latency because L2 is slow. So in this case, then we can we need to use the physical address. So we can just use the different approaches for accessing L1 and L2 because. The heat time is critical for the performance of L1. Okay, so this is TLB. Okay, so this is the end of the virtual memory. Actually, but you can also, uh, so I just explained that the hardware support for virtual memory, but as I mentioned, the virtual memory is managed by the operating system. So if you learn, uh, if you take the operating system, the next, next semester, maybe, then you can also learn about the virtual memory. So I will stop here. This is the end of the chapter five.